is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to upshift exotics i was on my way out the door this morning to go to another car show and i was already in the porsche i had the garage door up i was about to leave and then i just didn't really want to go uh, and here's why okay every saturday we go to a car show and i take you guys with me that's where i get all the content for these videos but as of lately the content seems very repetitive to me with the exception of last vlog and the hurricane and the pagani that was pretty cool right but with the exception of that a lot of the content we've been producing lately seems to be very repetitive and i don't want that to happen i don't want to shoot the same cars every saturday oh which car do we take today guys we take the mercedes do we take the porsche I think we're gonna pull the Mercedes right here, get it out of the sun, and it's a Porsche day. Wow, look how cool that key matches the car. That is so sick. I'll tell you one thing that Mercedes does better than Porsche is these cup holders. Uh, that is a little too flimsy for my liking, especially if it spilled all over this. We'd have kind of a big problem. Also, Alani Nutrition energy drinks, they taste really, really good. <laughs> Guys, no one does it quite like top speed. I think any car that I get in the future will have a top speed exhaust. It just sounds so, so good. Such a crisp, loud uh, downshift. It just cracks so loud. It's so clean. It sounds so good. And anybody who's ever heard my car in person, you guys know this does not sound like a Porsche. And that's what makes this exhaust fit with this car so well is that you hear it coming and you're, you really don't know what it sounds like. It kind of sounds like a Porsche, but it could sound like a Huracan. It could sound like many different things. Um, I've had people tell me that they thought I was a Huracan from a ways away because how much it was crackling and popping. And I know that's a big statement because this is a Porsche, but trust me, if you haven't heard this car in person, you need to. Also, the underpass. This is loud. <laughs> oh my gosh. It just sounds so good, guys. Oh man. Another exhaust out there that would sound better than a top speed custom straight pipe exhaust. Sounds so good. Hope the guys over there having lunch don't mind a little uh, downshifting. Nice white Supra here. Supras look pretty good. And here we go at Shape Dallas. One of the craziest things about Dallas is that you can be driving in the city on one side and on the other side you have farmland as far as you can see. Which is really cool because I come from Arkansas. For those of you who don't know, I actually grew up in a small town in Arkansas. And uh, this is what you normally saw almost everywhere you went. But right here we have the Dallas North Tollway and then we have farmland. You know, Teslas are cool and all. But can they do this? Nope. No, they can't. <laughs> they can't do that. All right, guys. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And we are going to wash the Porsche because it has been... I hate to say it, guys. It's been like a month since I've washed this car. But I was gone for about 10 days to Florida. And so really wasn't any need to wash it before that trip. It sounds so good. That startup is so, so crisp.
got some things to talk about, guys. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, I am highly considering selling both the C300 and the Porsche Cayman. You gotta be crazy to think it is. That crazy is good. Here is why, all right? I have been thinking for a very long time about getting the AMG GT or AMG GTS, and I have never been in one, I've never test driven one, so it's kind of uh, just an idea, right? Right now, the prices have pretty much stabilized in the AMG GT in the GTS market. Um, right now, you can pick them up from anywhere between 79,000 uh, with a little higher miles all the way up to 120,000 with less miles. As of the last couple of days, I have found a few here in the Dallas area that have very low miles. One of them only has 8,000 miles on it into 2016. This is a 2018 and that's a 2014. So by getting a 2016 AMG GT, and it's a GTS as well. Um, I looked at the Carfax, it's completely clean and clear. Uh, it is a silver car with a red and black interior. It looks really, really sick. It comes with a little over 500 horsepower and like, I think four to 500 foot pounds of torque. So it is a very powerful car and it is right on that level of like a supercar. I think a lot of people would consider that a supercar, whereas the Porsche Cayman, um, it is definitely has supercar looks, but the power output is a little bit lower. So that's why I personally kind of classify it as an exotic car. It doesn't really have super car capabilities. Um, but it is a tough decision guys, because number one, I love this car. Like this is a car that I dreamed about and I worked towards for so, so long. Um, I had pictures of this car on my phone back when, years and years and years ago, when I couldn't afford anything. And so giving this car up is kind of, uh, I have mixed feelings about it guys, because it's got a sentimental attachment to me that I worked so hard for, and we built this on the channel. I mean, we bought this car stock. If you guys remember, you OG subscribers, you know, this back one had like 200 subscribers. We had the exhaust, the even the window tent put on the car, the wheels, the wrap, I mean, everything. And the build technically isn't done yet on this car, but when opportunity pre presents itself, I have to realize that Upshift Exotics is a business, and it's a money, make. it's a business that's, that's there to make money. Um, nobody's in business to lose money, right? Or just to maintain. So we ha looking at it from the eyes of a CEO and a businessman, I'm in the business to make money. And if I can turn around this car and make a significant chunk of change, which I can, this car, the value on this car has gone up so much. Now this car, obviously, um, I actually purchased this just a few months ago in May. The market really hasn't moved on this very much at all but I could turn around and trade it in or sell it for what I bought it for. So it's kind of an even trade right there. The only thing I've lost on this was gas and a little bit of maintenance. So that's really about it. Obviously insurance, but we don't count that um, as tr a truly expense just on the vehicle itself. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think. I know it's been a bit of a talk. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Vote, should we trade in the C300 and the Cayman and get a car that is much, much higher up on that level uh getting up there into the supercar world um i mean that's a lot of horsepower it's a lot of torque and we could do a whole other build with something that is just so outrageously aggressive and mean like the amg gts guys what do you think i don't know let me know in the comments below but as always i hope you enjoyed this episode hit the like button hope you're having a great morning day or night or wherever you are in the world we'll see you next time